All right, for day six of the sweat program, we're gonna have a split lunge and a push-up into a shoulder tap for our warm-up. So we have 10 reps in each. Again, you'll find these on the um, cards on the screens. As you get through the sessions, all the stuff on that will make a bit more sense. So obviously, first couple of times out seeing the program, it probably doesn't make a huge amount of sense, but you can kind of come in and be able to reference them and the coaches obviously run through it all in the sessions as well. So split lunge up first. The best way to set these up is you wanna start feet kind of in under the hips. And then whichever leg you're going to lead forward, slide your weight over to that side so that you can lift this foot and kind of balance just on that front leg. For the split squats, most of the weight and most of the work is going to be done with your front leg. So slide to the side first, try and get your belly button lined up over the foot that's staying forward. And then we can take our step back by just sliding that other leg backwards. They're not quite perfectly in line, but they shouldn't be massively staggered either. If you're too staggered or if you're too in line with your legs, the balance will be a bit tricky. So we want them to be slightly staggered. And best way again is to say, get the belly button over the front foot, that stay in, step back, and then we're set from here. We can lower down. Again, good bend on the knee, drive them back up. And again, weight stays in that front leg, drive them back up. We'd obviously do 10 then on the other side. For the push-ups, you have push up into a shoulder tap. So we want to set this up probably a little bit easier than whatever way you would normally do push-ups just because the goal is to try and uh, just kind of get moving. We're not looking to tire the body out too much, but creating too much of a challenge right off the gate. So we just want to get moving, get warmed up. So either using the mats, we can do them on the floor, or what I would suggest, probably the best way to do them for the warm up is just using the benches. So the push up into a shoulder tap, the hands set up exactly the same way as we would for push up, but the feet you're going to widen them out a bit because with the push up, or with the shoulder tap part, we'll be taking one of our hands away so our point of contact will be coming away and we want to have a bit more balance so setup is the same as a push-up but instead of our feet being close together they go a little wider apart from there lower down push away touch shoulder lower down push away touch the opposite shoulder and we're just going to keep going that way until we get 10 reps done on the push-ups and it'll be five taps on each shoulder and um, as I say, we can do those, the exact same setup on the floor or off our knees. Um, but again, just slightly wider with the knees or with the feet to allow for the easier tap. But for the warm-up, I would suggest for, unless you're exceptionally strong with push-ups, we should all just do them off the bench. For the actual session itself, um, we're gonna have some curling press, pause goblet squats, and some incline surround press. So similar to, I think it was day three, we're gonna have the bench set up on the box along here for the incline surround press. I'm gonna show you the other two first, just without the bench in the way, so we can see, so we will need our box. We'll have the current press, and then we will have the pause goblet squats. So we'll get dumbbells for those. Um, probably wanna get different ones for each, one dumbbell or kettlebell for the goblet squat, and then a pair of dumbbells for the current press. Um, so dumbbells, current press, start dead hang down to the side, arms nice and long and shoulders open. We're gonna curl up, to the shoulders, elbows come under, and then push up overhead. We then reverse that for the way down, back down to the shoulder first, reverse the curl down to a dead hang, so no movement, no swing, and nice straight arms. They're not gonna half bend, and they're not swinging back to help us into the next rep. So it should be dead stop at the bottom of each. Dumbbells curl to the shoulder, elbows come under, push up, and then back down to dead stop. And just getting into a nice smooth rhythm with that once you kind of get the, the feel of it. You can do it quite broken and, and stage to get going and um, but once you kind of get into the the kind of smooth stuff we can push it on there uh goblet squats with a pause so we're going to take dumbbell or kettlebell we can hold kettlebells hand and face it out of the way is generally the best you can kind of hold it by the horn as well if you prefer but it's whatever option we would like and the dumbbell then it's just going to be dumbbell holds in and holding under here all right um, so that's going to be those for the setup the goblet squat itself is the same as our goblet squats for any other days of the week. We're all squatting down, just holding the pause at the bottom for a two count, and then driving back up. So all the way down, keeping it in close, just in front of the chin. It can drift in around a little bit as needed, and standing back up. The main thing is that the pause, we keep our tension. So holding tight, we're not kind of slacking off and relaxing down into it too much. Um, it's going to be our pause goblet squat. That's from then the incline serrano press. As I say, we will have the bench set up, best um, put it along the side. It just leaves you a bit more space 
on the platform to do the curl press and your pause goblet squat. And we have the option of elevating the heels for pause goblet squats on the edge of the platforms as well if we need to. So that'll be the setup for the incline surround press. I'm gonna turn it around just so you can see it a little better on the camera here now. But that will be where it should be set up. Or you could possibly set up on the back of the platform if you want to, but just make sure the box stays on the rubber because it won't slip on the rubber, it'll stay fixed, whereas on the timber it might slip a little bit. Um, the, unlike the chessboard row, it doesn't matter a huge amount if the if we have a massive amount of space here because we're not going to have dumbbells, but don't set the bench up right at the edge of the box just because it does slip a little bit then we haven't got anywhere for it to slip to. Now it shouldn't be slipping massively because we'll get on and off controlled, but yeah, best to just set it up kind of on the front or in the middle side of the box. The Serrano press itself, we're going to set up chin on the top of the bench. Let the arms hang down to start, and then you're going to pull them up to start in a W. You want to try and keep the elbows and the wrists as in line as we can, not having the wrists drag down and the elbows lift up. So trying to get as close to the two of them being in line, matching the angle of the torso as we can. From there, we're going to slide straight up to start, trying to get the elbows straight out, and then come in close together, keeping the wrists as high up as we possibly can. Again, trying to avoid dipping it down there, but depending on where your shoulder range is, you may find that that is as high as you can. The goal is to try and build that up over time as we're doing the set. So, elbow start with W, slide out into a Y, kind of shape, and into an I in the end, and then coming back down. So rather than kind of pushing straight in and hands crossing over, trying to keep pressing them out to get the elbows straight first, and then hands squeeze together at the top. So, elbows straight, squeeze in, and coming back. So it's kind of in that sliding arc motion, rather than a straight jab in and out motion. We don't need to use any load on those in the beginning. They're surprisingly challenging, and it's the type of movement where if it's too heavily loaded, you'll miss the whole target area because those muscles just won't be strong enough for it and other things will have to compensate or the range will be quite limited. So best to do those just empty handed first and then we can discuss loading options um, at some point down the line but for the majority of the setups, especially if you have 10 reps on those, I would say it's best just to keep a body weight and just look to build on the rounds and to make it a bit more challenging by working on keeping the, the hands a little bit higher up um, on those. One actually final point with them as well is when we are pressing out, we want to avoid lifting the chest. So we don't want to lift the hands just by lifting the chest up. It's just going to create a lot of tension on that lower part of the back. So chin should stay braced in against the bench and the chest should stay low as well. Just moving from the shoulders, not pulling from the back. And that is our day three. We have 10 of each again. I think yeah, 10, 10, and 10 on the curl and press. Pause goblet squats and the uh, incline serranos.